Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2024 AP Chemistry exam free response question number three. This is the solution guide to the 2024 AP Chem exam. So let's get to question number three. Question number three starts with a question about silver. The silver solid is, is reacting with H2S gas and it's making H, AG2S, silver sulfide, kind of a tarnish there plus hydrogen gas. And the first thing they want to know in part A is the oxidation numbers of silver in Ag as a solid and Ag2S. You can see Ag as a solid, the oxidation number, the charge is zero. Any solid or gas overall has a charge of zero. Take a look at Ag2S. Since sulfur is negative two, the Ag overall has to be positive two. Since there's two of them, each one is positive one. Question B looks at the difference between silver and copper and their atomic radiuses. They're about the same. They're a little bit different. And But the question is asking, explain why the sterling silver is better classified as a substitutional alloy than an interstitial alloy. Since the atomic radius of silver and copper are so similar, these atoms will substitute when mixed. An interstitial alloy would require a significant difference in the atomic radius between the two metal atom, atoms or the two atoms, one relatively large metal atom, one smaller either a non-metal or a metal atom, could be copper or something like that, but an interstitial would have a very distinct difference. Question number two says, using principles of atomic structure and Coulomb's law, explain why silver has a larger atomic radius than copper does. And it's all about the valence electrons and where they're located. Uh, silver has valence electrons that are located in a larger principal quantum energy level, the N equals five, as compared with the valence electrons of copper, the N equals four. When those valence electrons are in a larger principal quantum energy level, we understand they are further from the nucleus. They have less Coulombic attractions to the nucleus, resulting in a larger atomic radius. And then they give us before the tarnish removal, after the tarnish removal, you can see it was 409.21 grams before, 398.94 grams after. What are we going to do? We're going to subtract these. This gives us, this gives us 10.27 grams of the AG2S that has been removed. What do we do with grams? We divide by molar mass. We add up the molar mass to 47.8, and we get 0.0414 moles of Ag2S. And then we have to look out for a molar ratio here at the end because they didn't just want the moles of the silver sulfide, they wanted the moles of just the silver. So for every one Ag2S, we have two moles of silver. So therefore we have 0.0828 moles of the silver. Well, then it turns to an electrochemistry problem, and they give us two half reactions. You can see uh, one has three electrons. The other one has four electrons. We have to get the common multiple of 12 electrons, which means we have to take that top reaction, multiply by four, the bottom reaction, multiply by three. To figure out which one we have to flip, uh, we got to do a little bit of reading. You can see up on in the paragraph at the top, it says we are depositing solid rhenium, which means we not, we're not going to flip that top reaction. We, we are also producing oxygen gas. So I have to flip the bottom reaction, which means it's not going to be thermodynamically favorable. We'll get to that in a second. So what do we do? We multiply everything in that first reaction by four, everything in the bottom reaction by three, and we flip it. We add those together and we get the balanced reaction of four rhenium plus threes plus six water molecules and that's producing three oxygen gas molecules, 12 H pluses, and four solid rhenium there. And that's gonna be important, we're gonna use that later on. They wanted us to calculate the standard cell potential or the E of the cell. Well, we kept the positive 0 0.80, we flipped the bottom one, which meant that was negative 1.23 volts. It gave us our overall voltage of negative 0.43 volts. And you know what the next question is. The next question is saying, based on your answer, which means you have to stay consistent, explain why this process requires the use of an external power source. Since the cell potential is negative, the reaction is not favorable. The delta G is gonna be positive. You have an equation on your equation sheet, delta G equals negative NFE. Therefore, an external power supply is needed to supply the 0.43 volts to plate on this rhenium. And then probably, probably going to be the hardest problem of this exam, which is just a bunch of molar ratios. That's all it is, is we want to calculate the length of time to play 2.8 grams of the rhenium. We have grams. What's the first thing we do? 2.8 grams, we divide by the molar mass. 
and we get 0 0.0272 moles of rhenium. Then we have to go to our balance reaction. If you take a look at your balance reaction, for every four moles of rhenium, we are exchanging 12 electrons. So that is four moles of rhenium exchanges 12 moles of electrons. So we can multiply this moles of rhenium by three to get the moles of electrons. They're probably gonna give you a point to find the moles of electrons, not just the moles of rhenium, but the point to find the moles of electrons. Then we gotta use Coulomb's law, that Coulomb's, so sorry, Faraday's constant with Coulomb's for every mole of electrons. That's on your equation sheet. 96.45 Coulomb's for every one mole of electrons, which means if we know the moles of electrons, we know there's 78.76 Coulomb's. And then they told us there's two Coulomb's every second, which means if you have 78.76 Coulomb's, it took about 3,940 seconds to plate on this mass. And that is the 2024 AP Chemistry exam free response. Question number three, take a look at all my other questions and take a look at MrAiden.com. It'll help you out with AP Chemistry. See you guys. Bye.